Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Soul Silver Nuzlocke. Now, as you see in the last episode, I hatched a shiny Togepi from the egg, which I still don't know how that happened, but it got me thinking. I am playing with the shiny claws, so while Surge may have died, I can still use another Mareep if it happens to be shiny. So upon this realization, I immediately ran south of Violet City and sped up my emulator to quickly start shiny hunting. Now, of course, it did still take a while, but I finally found a shiny, but it turned out to be a shiny Ekans, meaning I faced. It's not that big of a deal because with shiny claws I can still use this. Now, it has Intimidate as you'll see here, so it's definitely worth taking for the team. After catching the Ekans, I named her Cobra as kind of like a play on with Arbok being Cobra in reverse. At least, I'm hoping that she will live to become an Arbok because shiny Arbok is absolutely beautiful. Now, after Ekans, I continued hunting, which, honestly, even with the emulator sped up, it still took a while. But I finally found the shiny Mareep that I was looking for. I caught him, and I named him Avenger in hopes that he would avenge the lost Surge. And then afterwards, I immediately started training him, evolved him, and made my way through Union Cave. After arriving back in Azalea Town with a freshly leveled up team, I quickly headed into the Pokemon Center to heal and finally take on the challenge of Bugsy's Gym. Now face to face with Azalea's Gym Leader, I started the battle. Heading into this battle, I was feeling pretty confident. I had evolved Hootie into a Noctowl, and we also had Avenger in the back in case we needed him. So Hootie immediately started attacking the Scyther with Peck, which did a really nice amount of damage. And Scyther was preparing rather than actually attacking us. So we got Scyther into the red, but he did have a Citrus Berry on hand. Now, assuming that he was going to heal his Scyther, I switched into Avenger just to see what he could do, because I wasn't going to spend all this time catching a shiny Mareep and not use it. So Quick Attack did a decent amount of damage, but Avenger was still standing, even after the second one. All it took was one Thundershock and Scyther immediately went down. So I probably didn't have to switch him in, but it was a flashier play anyway. So now he was sending in his Metapod and he also has a Kakuna. So I'm not too afraid of these. These are pretty simple Pokemon. So I just sent in Hootie, and he was going to try and peck them to death. So the first peck did a very generous amount of damage, and that shows from that tackle just how easy this was going to be. Now for some reason he decided to use his Super Potion on his Metapod instead of his Ace, which honestly doesn't make too much sense to me, but Metapod went down regardless. And now he was going to send in his Kakuna, which really wasn't that much of a challenge either. The Cocoon Pokemon are pretty simple. So he sits there trying to act all tough, but the Kakuna was really a joke. It took more damage than the Metapod did, and the very next turn, it went down to another peck. So the Azalea Gym Leader, I probably was over-exaggerating just a little bit how scared I was of fighting him, but I'm glad we came prepared, and it was a decently easy win. It's better than struggling and losing a Pokemon like with Faulkner. So after defeating Bugsy, we gained access to using Cut in the Overworld. So I quickly taught it to Venus, who at this point is turning into our HM slave. I didn't want to give it to Munch, because he was going to be learning Surf anyway. So I don't really think I'm going to be using a Victory Bell. So right now Venus is just going to get loaded with whatever HMs he can learn. And then after that, I also took the Roost that we got from Faulkner and proceeded to teach Hootie how to use that move. Now I feel like having a move to heal is going to be very beneficial, and I wasn't sure if I should get rid of Hypnosis or Reflect, and since Hypnosis helps us catch Pokemon better and we don't want to lose any encounters, I went ahead and got rid of Reflect. I might regret that later. We then proceeded west back into Elix Forest. And now with Cut available to us, we were able to leave the forest and move on to the next route. Now here is where I decided to start switch training Egg, because having Egg in the party initially was just so it could get some friendship, 
but I was thinking I might be able to use it, so I started throwing out egg against all of the trainers on the route. In just the first battle, egg already grew to level 6, so I figured he was old enough to start fighting his own battles. And as risky as it was, I decided to let him use metronome. Now, as horrible of an idea as that is, because I could get self-destruct or explosion, it actually went pretty well. I got a spark and then bite, which ended up being enough to take down this Spiro. Now, I do realize it's an incredibly risky move and could end up in having my shiny Togepi die, but at the same time, I'm still not 100% on whether or not I'm going to use Togepi anyway, so... It's not a horrible idea, and he grew to level 7 after only the first battle, so the switch training was going pretty well. I ran into the grass to get my encounter for the route, and I ran into a Rattata. Now, normally with Species Claws, I wouldn't have to catch this, but the way I do it is if I don't have any living team members of that species, then the encounter has to count. And since we sacrificed Tosker, we had to catch this Rattata as our Pokemon for the route. So the Rattata was an easy catch, and in honor of the sacrificed Rattata, I named her Tosker Jr. We proceeded down the route, continuing to switch train egg all the way through. Towards the end of the route, we run into the daycare, and we learn that Lyra's grandparents are the ones who run it. There's a lot of dialogue here that we just end up skipping through, and then we're able to continue on. And for some reason, her grandmother keeps assuming that we're dating the entire time. We battle the last few trainers on our way to getting to the next city. And we ran into a very close call battling policeman Keith. So all he has is a single Growlithe. And he was level 17, so there was no way I was going to let Egg try to take this one by himself. So I switched into Munch, hoping that I could just water gun this thing to death. Even though Munch was also a little bit under level. Now, Growlithe used Ember, which hardly does anything, so I wasn't concerned. But he was also faster, and it turns out that he was able to burn us. So water gun didn't do as much as I was hoping it would, and Ember kept breaking away. Now, look at how close I am. I'm at 6 HP. And the burn brings us down to 1. Munch almost died, and remembering the Faulkner battle, I immediately switched him out instead of trying to heal, because I know how that goes. So I switched in Hootie instead, the Growlithe used Ember, and Hootie was able to take it down with a peck. So that was a very close call. But I'm learning, at least I hope I am learning, how to recognize these situations and not end up losing a Pokemon to something stupid like a policeman with a single Growlithe. The rest of the battles went smoothly and we were able to make it to the next city without any casualties. So now we find ourselves in Goldenrod. You know, the big city with the massive shopping complex. So, this is probably one of my favorite cities in the entire Pokemon series, so I can't wait to see where we go from here. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Later!